What's up, my boomers? It's me, Melanie Mac, here on my new channel, Melanie Mac Go Boom. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. Now, I, I like to take any excuse I can to dunk on Rings of Power, and that's exactly what I'm going to do today. So, <laughs> there were some more leaks, apparently, alleged leaks, and we're going to talk about these. Now, as I've said in other videos where I've discussed Rings of Power, uh, I I've, I've briefly read, like, The Hobbit in some Lord of the Rings books, but not really okay it just kind of skimmed through them uh and not even to completion so i don't claim to be some middle earth historian i'm a big fan of the movies the peter jackson movies uh so that is you know just to just to put that out there but you know one thing that us movie fans the book fans and the book and movie fans all have in common is that we seem to to not like rings of power so what it's looking like thus far anyway. So let me go ahead and get ready to dive into today's discussion. Because, okay, this is coming from Bounding Into Comics. Uh, they say the no new Lord of the Rings, the Rings of Power, leaks detail. Galadriel's rage and plot information about Halbrand. Okay, let's see what this trash fire is all about. So... It says, a brand new set of alleged leaks from the Lord of the Rings, the Rings of Power, show off a new scene and detail Galadriel's rage. The new set of alleged leaks comes from Twitter user Fellowship Fans. They began, Galadriel and Halbrand are brought before the court of Miriel and Farazhan by Elendil, to the surprise of everybody, still in the rags from when they were rescued from the shipwreck. In the next tweet, they detail tense introduction follows. Verbal standoffs between Galadriel, Muriel, and Farazhan, where Galadriel proclaims her lineage. It's Halbrand who tries to act as the concili conciliatory one and keeps Galadriel's rage in check. They're both then marched off to their quarters, or jail, unconfirmed, by guards, during which time Halbrand secretly gets a dagger from Illendil. This is when Galadriel fights off guards, not when she arrives to Numenor, they add. Finally, they add, in the trailer, the, Num the <laughs> Numenorians are saving Galadriel and Halbrand from the shipwreck. During their voyage to Numenor, all three, Elendil, Halbrand, and Galadriel become closer. They would reveal more about Halbrand and the scene where Galadriel is being rescued from the sea on their YouTube channel. So here's the video. Uh, they claimed Halbrand potentially either causes one of the shipwrecks out at sea or saves Galadriel only, leaving everyone else on the ship to die. This leak comes after Prime Video provides a first look at the TV series to Vanity Fair, where Galadriel is described as thousands of years younger as angry and brash as she is clever and certain that evil is looming closer than anyone realizes. Her wading into combat to fight off guards should also not come as a surprise as the Vanity Fair article detailed that Galadriel would be the commander of the Northern Armies. On top of that, in the first trailer, Galadriel is shown leading men into combat on horseback as well as climbing what appears to be a glacier or a mountain in full armor <laughs> i can't even imagine trying to climb a mountain in full armor dude let alone just regular movement now i made a video about this how um the change of galadriel from you know a magic user to now just be going straight up warrior class here uh so i guess she did respec uh <laughs> later on <laughs> You can check that video. Uh, I uploaded it like a couple weeks or so ago. Uh, all right. This leak also appears to back up a previous leak from Fellowship fans that detailed that Muriel would be in charge of Numenor rather than Farazhan. Back in December, Fellowship fans detailed that Farazhan will be Muriel's chief advisor and will unexpectedly defer to Muriel's seniority. But for the most part, he acted like he was in charge, but not king. If this leak is true, it's in direct contradiction to Tolkien's work in the Silmar Silmarillion. <laughs> I don't know why I have such a hard time saying that. Something showrunners J.D. Payne and Patrick McKay indicated they could not do. Speaking to Vanity Fair, 
Payne detailed that they did not have the rights to much of Tolkien's writings on the Second Age. He explained, We have the rights solely to the Fellowship of the Ring, the Two Towers, the Return of the King, the Appendices, and the Hobbit. And that, that is it. We do not have the rights to the Silmarillion, Unfinished Tales, the History of Middle-Earth, or any of those books. McKay would then make it crystal clear that they would not be able to contradict works that they did not have the rights to. There's a version of everything we need for the Second Age in the books we have the rights to. As long as we're painting within those lines and not egregiously contradicting something we don't have the rights to, there's a lot of re leeway and room to dramatize and tell some of the best stories that Tolkien ever came up with, he added. Well, if this leak is true, it makes McKay out to be a big fat liar because Tolkien's writing writings about Muriel and Farazan are quite detailed. In the Silmarillion, Farazan marries his cousin Muriel. <laughs> oh, <laughs> against her will, in order to usurp the Numenorean throne. Tolkien writes, and it came to pass that Tar Palantir grew weary of grief and died. He had no son, but a daughter only, whom he named Muriel in the elven tongue. And to her now, by right and the laws of the Numenoreans, came the scepter. But Farazan took her to wife against her will, doing evil, in this and evil also in that the laws of Numenor did not permit the marriage even in the royal house or of those <laughs> more nearly akin than cousins in the second degree he continued and when they were wedded he seized the scepter into his own hand taking the title of Arpharazon Tarakalion in the elven tongue and the name of his queen he changed to Arzimraphel Tolkien wrote Farazan was not an advisor, rather, he was a warrior who participated in the Numenorean's excursions into Middle-earth. Tolkien writes in the Silmarillion, for Farazan, son of Gimikad, had become a man yet more restless and eager for wealth and power than his father. He had fared often abroad as a leader in the wars that the Numer Numenorians, <laughs> I'm struggling here, made then in the coastlands of Middle-earth, seeking to extend their dominion over men. And thus, he had won great renown as a captain, both by land and sea. Therefore, when he came back to Numenor, hearing of his father's death, the hearts of the people were turned to him, for he brought with him great wealth and was for the time free in his giving. In fact, it is not Galadriel who has fits of rage, but Farazan whose anger grows. Tolkien wrote, Great was the anger of our Farazan at these tidings. And, he, and as he pondered long in secret, his heart was filled with a desire of power unbounded and the sole dominion of his will. And he determined without counsel of the valor, or the aid of any wisdom but his own, that the title of king of men he would himself claim, and would not compel Sauron to become his vassal and his servant, for in his pride he deemed that no king should ever arise so mighty as to vie with the heir of Erendil. What do you think of this latest rumor? Okay, I'm like really curious for the, the Middle Earth historians to chime in on this, that's for sure. Now, Here's the tweet. There's like some replies and stuff like that. Nerd Roddick says, one of the guys in the video, which I didn't watch the video, but yeah, said there weren't any great characters in Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings. WTF. Uh, that is a huge fail and I'm personally offended by that. So let me go ahead and just vent for a second. I mean, dude, what, what about Gandalf? We got Gandalf here. Sam and Frodo, so excellently casted. Amazing. And what about Legolas? Come on now. And pi And Legolas. I mean, really. What are they even on about? <laughs> All right. I'm going to go ahead and read some comments from my last videos. We have... 
12 eel deal who says all the corporations and private donors oh this is about the kotaku and uh journo strike that in my last video uh, and private donors need to do is not cave in. They can bleed their staff dry and hire on people that actually play games, have fun, and show their enthusiasm in articles. For once, I'm totally against the people on strike. The people striking have been actively ruining my favorite publications for over 10 years. And I totally agree with this. I feel like gaming journalists, that the current gaming journalists are activists more than anything, more than actual gamers. They seem to not even like gaming and complain about any ounce of difficulty or any ounce of length in a game. Uh, it's just, not to mention, shoving down their their activism down our throats all the time. And telling gamers that we're such terrible people. I Come on, dude. Procrastinator says, might I say your channel is something I just found. Binged watched all your videos. And it's like a fresh breath of air. Hope you grow huge on YouTube. Keep up the good work. Love from Australia. Thank you. This made me smile so big. I was just so stoked about this. First of all, I'm happy that uh, that uh, YouTube is suggesting my videos. That's that's always nice. Uh, but I'm really, it, it really warmed my heart that you found me entertaining enough to binge watch my videos. Thank you so much. Now, the White Trash Panda says, I'm trying to transition into a carnivore diet. Unfortunately, I have an extremely limited budget right now, and I do factory work so long hours, six days a week, and very labor intensive. I'm having difficulty affording enough meat to get through the week. Also, very little time to cook as I only get one day off. Got any tips? Uh, honestly, uh, I don't know what your budget has been prior. Uh, I just know for me when I like want to go cheap, cheap carnivore, the way to do that is just to stock up on 80, 20 ground beef and eggs. That's it. Uh, obviously electrolytes, uh, I would get, I would advise because here's the thing is keto or carnivore, both are like a diuretic. They, they flush a lot of, uh, inflammation and, and water out of your body. And because of that, you're going to flush out your, uh, uh, some electrolytes. And so some people do have like a keto flu, they call it as a result. So I do think that, um, getting a, an electrolyte mix, obviously low to no carb, uh, is good to have. Uh, so you can either do your own or you can buy them already mixed. I would advise already mixed personally, unless you really know what you're doing, because if you overdo it on potassium, you can get heart palpitations and all kinds of stuff like that. So when they're already mixed, you don't have to worry as much about it. Just make sure you're, uh, putting it in the, um, suggested amount of water at minimum, because, um, uh, if you overdo it, yeah, you might have some issues there. Uh, but yeah, honestly, I save money on carnivore versus before, but that's also because I don't go out to eat anymore, almost never. And if I do, it's just like some beef patties or, uh, you know, in a pinch or something like that. Uh, but yeah, I think that if you just get invested in some 80, 20 ground beef, you can always like meal prep that, uh, on your day off, just cook your ground beef. Uh, if you have an air fryer, that's nice. Cause it gets nice and crispy. If you just put them in or just put it straight in, uh, and yeah, but otherwise, I mean, ground beef and eggs, can't go wrong with that, and pretty cheap, all things considered, uh, okay, we got Donald Payne, who says, the government wants to dumb us down through meds, and now making devil's lettuce legal, now, if the effects of it, minus THC, help, great, my opinion, but do research before you start with medical devil's lettuce, uh, you know, I honestly, I honestly agree. Um, I think that medical devil's lettuce should not be uh, illegal or anything like that. But I do think that people need to look into it or at least uh, I think it's great for people who need it. But otherwise, again, I'm not going to tell people what to do. But otherwise, I would say, hey, if you don't need it, you're probably better off without it. Um because, I mean, there are some studies and stuff like that showing what it does to your to your brain. And it can make you a bit dumber, I guess. Uh, I don't know how else. I'm not, like, super versed in this. So, uh, again, I'm not even against it. And I think that it does help a lot, pe a lot of people. But I think that when it comes to most anything in life, uh, if you can just get by without relying on stuff like that, do it, dude. Um, I do have a lot of, like, conspiracy feels about this kind of stuff because Devil's Lettuce was so, 
like illegal. People are going to jail for a long amount of times. Well, then all of a sudden the government makes it legal, but once they have control of it, okay, and they're making it. That makes me very suspicious about what all they're doing to it and the quality of it. And even if it is nearly as beneficial and if there could be some harmful properties, I don't know. But I mean, I will agree that, yeah, I don't know. It's sus. It is a little sus. I will say that. But again, that's, that's just my opinion there. So let me go ahead and dive into the verse of the day. And today I picked John, 1 John 2.17. And it says, and the world is passing away along with its desires, but whoever does the will of God abides forever. And yeah, I mean, pretty self-explanatory, pretty great. That's the thing is that sometimes we get, and I know with myself, can get so caught up in what's going on in the world and um, think about our own selfish desires and what we want to be happy. And I mean, and there's nothing wrong with having said desires. Like if you want to live nice and you want to have nice things you want to have your ps5 and uh all that kind of stuff and be able to afford nice things this that and the other um and live a happy and comfortable life i mean that's obviously the goal man right but at the end of the day it just really puts things into perspective that you know it's what comes after that is a lot more important so uh, nothing wrong with wanting nice things and wanting to live a happy life and wanting our own desires and all that kind of stuff but you know there's a lot more to existence, <laughs> I guess you could say. So, how long did I go on this video? Oh, not even as long as I thought. I thought this was going to be, like, really long. Okay, well, anyway, that's it for today's video. Now, I did make that, uh, some of y'all were asking it. I mentioned how I made beef jerky, how I was making it on my last video. I made two pounds of it, and I ate a pound of it yesterday, and I will be eating a pound of it today. It turned out so good. I love it. And I use ground beef, and again, some people had issues with that, but I prefer using ground beef to make beef jerky because it's just easier to chew when I'm eating, like, a pound of it sitting. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, I'm stoked how that turned out. Oh, also, since I got a little extra time anyway, I thought this video was going to be, like, freaking... 40 minutes long or something because that article is long. So we got a little extra time. Uh, crap. Where am I trying to go? There it is. I posted this today because I was just comparing my gym progress. This is about a year apart. Look at that. I'm so excited. I am so excited with the, uh, with the progress I've made. But anyway, yeah, that's, that's that. Now, and when it comes to comments on my future videos uh, over the weekend, I'm going to read some older ones and not they're not going to be as current just simply because uh, I've got two baby showers I'm going to. Uh, my mom is visiting and all that. So I will be pre-recording uh, content for over the weekend. So again, the comments won't be super current, but I still will get to those eventually. <laughs> so just uh, stay tuned for that. But thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video. I'll see you again tomorrow. And in the meantime, go boom.